Okay, we want to solve 2 cosine x minus 5 sine x equals 3 for the first two positive solutions. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So in order to solve this one, um, unfortunately, there's no easy way to just rewrite this using like the Pythagorean identities or, you know, tangent identity or anything like that. So the approach we need to take here is to rewrite the left-hand side of this uh, equation, the 2 cosine x minus 5 sine x, as a single sine function. So referencing um, sort of how we approach that uh, from the book, um, if we, to rewrite m sine bx plus n cosine x as a single sine function, a sine bx plus c, we use this approach here. Um, so let's see if we can apply that. So the first thing we're going to do is notice that the order of the terms here does not match the order of the terms in our definition, right? The order in our definition started with the sine function. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as negative 5 sine x plus 2 cosine x, which lets me identify that the coefficient on sine, which we're calling m here, is negative 5, and the coefficient on cosine is 2, so n is 2. Then we can go ahead and use the rest of our process. So to find our amplitude, a squared is m squared plus n squared, which is 29. Uh, and then square root would give me a is the square root of 29. And then to find c, the cosine of c is m over a, so negative 5 over root 29. And sine of c is n over a, so 2 over root 29. And again, both of these are important because they help us identify the quadrant of the solution. So let's focus on this part for a second. So looking at just the cosine and sine equations there, notice that since cosine is negative and sine is positive, the angle must be in quadrant two, right? Because on a unit circle, the x coordinate would be negative and the y coordinate positive in quadrant two. So let's go ahead and solve. So I'm going to work off of the cosine equation. You can also use the sine equation if you want. But working off the cosine equation, I can do the cosine inverse of negative 5 over root 29. And I get 2.7611 as my solution. Notice that this angle is in quadrant 2. And so we can just go ahead and use it. We don't need to find a second solution. Remember, cosine inverse will give me an angle between 0 and pi. So it will give me an angle either in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. I got quadrant 2 this time, uh, so this angle is going to work for me. So using this value of c we got here and the a from earlier, we can rewrite negative 5 sine x plus 2 cosine x as a single sine function, a shifted sine function, square root of 29 sine x plus 2.7611. All right, so then... Let's go back to our original problem. Our original problem said uh, solve 2 cosine x minus 5 sine x equals 3 uh, for the first two positive solutions. And we just found that we can rewrite the left-hand side as root 29 sine x plus 2.7611. And so now we have that equals 3. Again, we replaced the left-hand side with this rewritten version. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve this equation. So we're just going to focus in on that now. So the first step, um, or a good first step, would be to divide by the root 29 to get that by to get the sine by itself on the left. Uh, and then because this is not just a sim simple sine, uh, I'm tempted. I usually like to do a substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and let u equal the thing inside the parentheses. In this case, x plus 2.7611. And then my equation becomes a much nicer looking sine of u equals 3 over root 29. And this equation I know how to solve, right? I can find my first solution by doing the sine inverse, and that gives me an angle in the first quadrant. And then my second solution is pi minus the first one. Again, the idea there is on a unit circle, we know the sine value, we know the y value is 3 over root 29, with our two angles with the same sine value. This, the, the sine inverse gives me the first one, so that's this solution. 
And then the second solution here is halfway around, that's pi, and then back by uh, the same amount, by the 0 0.5909, that's the reference angle. And so that gives me my second solution, the uh, point, uh, sorry, the 2.5507. But these are values for u, and are we're trying to solve for x. So now we need to undo our substitution. So let's go ahead and do that. So first thing we would do is we would let, uh, we'd replace the u here with x. So instead of u equals 0.5909, we've got x plus 2.7611 equals 0.5909, and that gives me x is negative 2.1702. We do the same thing with our second solution, replacing the u with x plus 2.7611, and that's going to equal our u value, the 2.5507, subtract from both sides, and we end up with x equals negative 0.2104. And now we have two solutions, but they're negative solutions, and the problem was asking us for the first two positive solutions. And so to find the positive solutions, uh, we can just find coterminal solutions. In other words, we can add a full period. Now, we do want to be careful here. If this was not just sine x, if this was like sine 2x or sine 3x, we would have to adjust what we're adding here so that we're adding a full period. But since this is a plain old sine x, we can go ahead and add 2 pi to both of these solutions and come up with our two positive solutions.